In the world's dawn, God created the heavens and the earth on the second day. And on the very same day, God created the angels, archangels, and cherubim. And these heavenly creatures would inhabit the heavens. The renowned Gabriel and Michael were among these magnificent beings. But there was yet another entity who stood out due to his beauty and splendor, known as Lucifer. He was the most important creature God had ever created. But although he had so many qualities, or perhaps due to that, Lucifer was taken by pride. This is the vice that leads to arrogance, vanity, and endless haughtiness. Pride was one of the seven deadly sins. The proud Lucifer considered himself to be so perfect that he decided to create his own throne, placed even above God, since he wished to be like God. To accomplish his plan, the evil angel deceived the other angels around him. Therefore, the father of falsehood had by his side a third of the angelic beings who inhabited the heavens. Together, they would unleash a battle for heaven. But Lucifer encountered an outstanding opponent, Archangel Michael, who commanded the heavenly militia of God-loving angels. To defeat the Lord's angels, Lucifer turned himself into a mighty dragon and dueled against Michael, who wielded a flaming sword. Notwithstanding all his might, the dragon did not defeat Michael, since the latter had God by his side. Lucifer and his evil angels were banished from heaven. These angels fell on the earth and were trapped in hell. But Lucifer endured even greater punishment. He, once the most beautiful angel, was transformed into the heinous Satan. Lucifer and his fallen angels started to live in hell. But although defeated, Satan still wanted to avenge himself against his creator and decided to attack his greatest creation, humanity itself, which had been created in the image and likeness of God. A serpent-shaped Satan entered the Garden of Eden and convinced the innocent Eve to taste the forbidden fruit. And using his deceitful tongue, Lucifer concatenated the original sin, which caused Adam and Eve to be driven out of paradise. After that, Satan would devote all his efforts to alienate man from God, turning them into sinners so that they failed to reach paradise. Lucifer, the fallen angel, rejected God's grace and therefore will spend eternity trying to destroy his work. We all have heard of Adam and Eve, who according to the Bible were the first couple of human beings created by God. But an ancient Jewish myth contests that Eve was the first woman. This myth states that, before Eve, there was another woman, Lilith. Unlike Eve, who came from Adam's rib, Lilith emerged from clay along with Adam. Since she was created by God in the same way as Adam, Lilith did not submit to her husband's commands because she thought she was equal to him and did not accept Adam's domination. Lilith and Adam inhabited the Garden of Eden, but Lilith's rebellion put her in a situation where she was forced to choose between submitting to her husband or leaving the Garden of Eden. Lilith was not willing to give up her independence, therefore she opted to leave Adam and the Garden of Eden behind. The first woman ever created went into exile and settled herself near the Red Sea. God sent angels in an attempt to convince Lilith to return to the Garden of Eden, but she turned her back on God. Without his wife, Adam started to feel lonely. God, seeing that he was struggling with loneliness, decided to create a new woman for him, Eve. Due to her decision to reject the creator, Lilith was demonized. She was now considered a woman-shaped demon. In her demonic shape, she would have the power to instigate disease in newborn children, and to protect children from evil, the babies were given amulets with the names of the angels who tried to take Lilith back to Eden. These stories affirm that Lilith was jealous of the happy life Adam and Eve led in paradise, and, as an act of revenge, she assumed the shape of a serpent and tricked Eve, forcing her and Adam to taste the forbidden fruit, which caused the couple to be expelled from the paradise. 
Lilith's story is quite well known, yet this version is not present in the Christian Bible and it is rejected by both Catholics and Protestants. The version in which she would have been Adam's first wife is found in the Sirach alphabet text. The date of the writings is unknown, but it is believed that they were created already in the medieval era. The myth of Lilith is found in Hebrew, Babylonian, Sumerian, and Assyrian mythology. The figure of Lilith in Mesopotamia was seen as an evil deity or, when associated with the moon, she was regarded as a goddess with different phases and therefore different moods. That way, she could be seen as a fertility goddess but also as a devilish figure. There are theories that state that Lilith's absence from the Bible was created during the councils that defined the canonical books that would constitute the Bible as we know it today. The figure of Lilith as an independent and strong woman would go against the patriarchal structure, one of the cornerstones of the Judeo-Christian culture. For this reason, Lilith was embraced by the feminist movement. She is often regarded as the first feminist. The movement claims that Lilith was unfairly demonized, like most women in our history who have attempted to defy the patriarchy. Whether as a demonic figure or as a symbol of women's struggle, Lilith's story is still the subject of much interest. The Bible prophesizes that a sinister figure will emerge when the end times approach. This evil being will be known as the Antichrist. He will be the opponent of Jesus Christ when the latter finally returns. The Antichrist is a son of Satan and, like Christ, will come into the world from the womb of a woman. This being, half a man, half a devil, will disguise himself among men, waiting for the final judgment. In the beginning, it will be difficult to identify the son of the devil because he will not give any indication of his origin, much less of his intentions. His strength will become even greater when men believe less in the forces of Satan. After all, when God says in the Exodus, I am who I am, the Antichrist says, I am who I am not. To find the Antichrist among men, based on signs of evil, will be a fruitless search. After all, the son of Satan is capable of the greatest acts of benevolence only to disguise his ultimate goal, to ruin the work of the Creator. The Antichrist will use his increasing influence to convince men that the Kingdom of God does not exist and that the only existing world is the one in which we live. By denying the existence of heaven, he will convince those who do not have genuine faith in the Creator that hell does not exist either. Thus, without fearing hell, man will become an easy target for the devil's temptations. The Antichrist will become stronger and more influential as the final judgment approaches. He will become an important public figure and his words will win millions of souls for the ranks of Satan. The son of Satan will proclaim the right to absolute freedom because by denying heaven and hell, the idea of good and evil will also be ruined. Then everything will be allowed. All the values preached in the Bible will be denied and considered dogmas of a corrupted church which, with its shackles, makes man's development impossible. The Antichrist will have impressive qualities. He will be an intellectual genius with great oratory skills and his political ability will make him an unprecedented politician. A new religion will be born under the command of the Antichrist. This new creed will deny Jesus as the Messiah the Antichrist will declare himself to be the true and only Messiah. The opponent of Christ will have the power to rule over all nations and will found a world religion. Some say that the influence of the devil will reach the throne of St. Peter in Rome. The church itself will be used to destroy the true faith. Like wolves disguised as lambs, they will use the words of the Lord in a distorted way, only in order to keep men away from God. The Antichrist will use tricks in the form of miracles to take the place that belongs to Christ. He will mark people with the number of the beast, 666. When the son of perdition reaches the height of his power and many have already accepted his will, Jesus will finally return to save the souls of those who have not yet yielded to the temptation of Satan, and the end of time will begin. 
The epithet of Antichrist has already been applied to various historical figures, such as Nero, Napoleon, Hitler, Luther, one of the leaders of the Protestant Reformation, infuriated by the directions of the Catholic Church, said that the Pope was working against Christ, which would make him an Antichrist. The statement still echoes among some followers of Protestant doctrines who believe that the Antichrist will emerge in the form of one of St. Peter's successors. The term Antichrist has become vulgar and is now used to refer to all those who deny the divinity of Jesus such as atheists, Jews, Muslims, and so on. But according to tradition, the true Antichrist will emerge where he is least expected, and by the time his true identity is revealed, it will be too late. According to the Old Testament, there is a giant creature in the ocean's depths. His name is Leviathan. According to the sacred text of Jews and Christians, like all creatures that walk on land, fly in the air, and swim in the waters, Leviathan was also one of God's creations. This creature is described in the book of Job, where God himself describes this colossal monster. The beast resembles a huge marine dragon. Men would be consumed by fear whenever they spotted him. No man is brave enough to dare to awaken such a creature, since the idea of defeating it would be nothing but an illusion. God himself describes the mighty Leviathan as a colossal creature, the bearer of incredible power. The huge monster creates massive waves when moving. His powerful mouth has dreadful teeth. His back is protected by rows of shields so close together that not even air can pass between them. Leviathan has a powerful blow that throws flashes of light. There's fire in his mouth and smoke in his nostrils. When this beast rises, even the most powerful run away terrified because swords, spears, and arrows can do nothing against a creature who has his chest as hard as the most resistant stone. Nothing on earth can compare to Leviathan's power. But such a creature owes its existence to God's desire since, like every human being, Leviathan can only have their food due to the grace of God. The beast was the inspiration for the English philosopher Thomas Hobbes in his work Leviathan. According to Hobbes, the man in his natural state, where there are no laws, tends to unleash an all-against-all quarrel. To eliminate this state of anarchy, there has to be a social pact where everyone relinquishes part of their sovereignty in the name of a figure who has absolute power. This figure that would have authority over men would be the state, which, due to its power before men, Hobbes compares with the gigantic biblical monster known as Leviathan. Satan is the most powerful demon in Judeo-Christian culture. His image as a red horned creature with a trident is already crystallized in the popular imagination. His name means adversary, the opposite of all that God and Jesus represent. Satan is always in an opposite position to God in the struggle for the souls of men. Traditionally, Satan is associated with the figure of Lucifer, who was once a heavenly figure. Because of his pride, he rebelled against God. Lucifer convinced other angels to fight alongside him against the Creator. But this rebellion was stifled by the archangel Michael. Together with his divine militia, he expelled the rebels and threw them from heaven. Lucifer and the other fallen angels began to inhabit hell. The leader of the rebellious angels was identified as Satan himself. According to some interpretations, Satan had taken the form of a serpent and convinced Eve to taste the forbidden fruit, causing mankind to be cast out of paradise. Satan, when identified as the devil, assumes the personification of all evil. The Bible describes that one day God was visited by Satan, the accuser, the Lord introduced him to Job, a man so virtuous and faithful that his soul would be out of Satan's reach. But God's opponent noticed that Job was only faithful to God because he counted on his blessings. 
he had everything he wanted. Satan bet with God that, without his blessings, Job's faith would turn to dust and he would curse God. Job was left with nothing, his wealth, his servants, his prestige. He even lost his family. Satan lost the bet because, despite all that suffering, Job refused to curse the Creator. But Satan's most famous biblical appearance is his encounter with Jesus, who had gone into the desert under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, where he would spend 40 days and 40 nights fasting. Seeing the hunger that Jesus felt, Satan turned stones into bread. But Jesus resisted temptation. Satan challenged Jesus to throw himself off a mountain to see if he would be saved by angels. But Jesus said there was no need to test the Lord. Finally, Satan offered to give the world to Jesus if he would worship the Lord of hell. But Jesus also rejected this temptation, claiming that he would only worship God and deny Satan. God's opponent, as well as the Creator, will send his Son to earth to prepare the ground for the final judgment. This Son of Satan will be known as the Antichrist. Satan is not an exclusive figure in Judeo-Christian culture. This evil being is also present in Islam. He is known by the name of Iblis, an evil jinn who emerged from the fire. Iblis hated mankind with all his might, and his mission was to turn mankind away from God. Those who turn away from Allah, following in the footsteps of Satan, will be cast into the fire of hell where they will find their just punishment. Whether in Christianity, Judaism, or Islam, Satan is present, trying to lead man astray from the path of goodness and justice. Hell is undoubtedly a dreadful place filled with pain and suffering. The ones subjugated to it are destined to eternal suffering. But, according to some Christian traditions, the souls of sinners are not the only ones there. They share their misery in the company of the most sinister creatures, conventionally known as demons. Among these, seven stand out, the seven princes of hell. These demons are related to each of the seven deadly sins. Belphegor, the lord of the fire, is also known as the demon of laziness, According to some traditions, Belphegor had once been a powerful archangel named Baal-peor, but when the rebellion of Lucifer was unleashed in the heavens, he did not join the rebelling angels, nor did he support the army of the Lord's angels. Due to his inertia, he was considered a defector and thrown into hell. Azazel was among the fallen angels who rebelled against God. At the dawn of time, Azazel was carnally related to the woman who lived on earth. The fruits of this union were known as Nephilim. Azazel's descendants would taint the earth and because of that were swept away by the God-generated flood. Azazel, who once had been an angel, became an archdemon who represents the sin of wrath. Mammon was one of the many pre-Christian deities. He started to be seen as a devilish figure associated with the sin of greed and avarice. Jesus condemned the cult of money, personified in Mammon's figure. Therefore, men could not serve Mammon and God at the same time. Beelzebub is associated with the figure of Baal, a former Semitic god of fertility, and Zebud, the lord of the flies. This merger gave rise to the figure of Beelzebub, the demon of pestilences. He is regarded as one of the most powerful demons, only behind Lucifer. His unquenchable hunger turns him into a relentless devourer. The plagues brought by the demon devour everything in its path. Therefore, he is associated with the sin of gluttony. Asmodeus is one of the most powerful infernal demons. His origin is found in the most impure man that ever existed. He was the king of Sodom, the Sin City. Asmodeus guided Sodom's inhabitants towards depravity, thus the city endured God's wrath and was devastated. Asmodeus, the most corrupt of men, was elevated to a demon when he reached hell, and due to his lust, he is related to that sin. 
Leviathan is a dreadful creature that lives in the depths of the Mediterranean. His massive power awakens fear in the hearts of men. The description of this creature is found in Job's book, and that account describes it as something like a water dragon. The colossal sea demon is associated with the deadly sin of envy. The last and surely the most renowned infernal prince is Lucifer, the leader of the angels who rebelled against God. Lucifer was the most beautiful of all celestial beings, and for having such a wide array of qualities, the sin of pride took hold of him. His excessive pride led him to find himself equal to God, and so he conducted a rebellion against his creator. The demons were defeated by the angelic forces of Archangel Michael, and the rebelling forces were expelled from heaven and thrown into hell. In the depths of the earth, Lucifer and the other hellish princes conspire to corrupt God's work. These demons await the days preceding Christ's return, when they will take the earth through the Antichrist, again fighting the Creator's forces.